Hey, Ariel, if I could have you state and spell your name for the record. Ariel Wisniewski, A-R-I-E-L, W-I-S-N-I-E-W-S-K-I. And Ariel, what's your occupation? Currently the cleaning supervisor for Pablo Management. And back in March of 2018, where did you work? Racy Delane's Coffee Lounge. And do you recall working at Racy's on March 22nd, 2018? I do. And do you recall seeing Jason Mengel that day? I do. What time did you see Mr. Mengel arrive? Around 8 a.m. What did you observe Mr. Mengel do? Um, he sat outside and he smoked cigarettes. And on that day, did you see the defendant come to Racy's Coffee Shop? I did. And is that same defendant present in the courtroom today? Yes. Could you describe what she's wearing and where she is seated? She's seated between two people on my left-hand side. She's wearing a pink blazer and a floral blouse. Thank you. And uh, do you recall what time the defendant came into Racy's? Around 11 a.m. Had it been some time since you had last seen her at Racy's? Yes. Do you know how much time had passed? Probably around a month. Can you describe for me um, what the defendant did when she came into Racy's, what you observed her do? Um, she came up and she ordered a mocha from me. Um, she paid me, tipped me, and then she talked to people that were seated at the counter. And um, was that a little bit unusual? Yeah. And why was that unusual? She rarely paid and she never tipped. So how did she get her coffee if she didn't pay for it? Jason usually paid for it. And can you describe for me the defendant's appearance that day? Um, she wasn't wearing makeup. She looked pretty solemn. If she wants to describe actual yeah. clothes or... Overall, I believe she is describing what she observed in the way that she has chosen to describe it, so... Can you continue? Um, she was wearing pretty plain clothes. So fair to say she looked different than you remembered her usually looking? Yes. And do you, um, who did you see her go talk to? Max Martinson. And did you see her return at all later that day? No. Did you know Alex Woodworth? Yes. Did you see him at Racy's on March 22nd, 2018? No, I didn't. No further questions. All right. Any cross-examination? Yes, thanks. When you uh, want to ask you questions about March 22nd, okay? Yeah. Uh, when Ezra arrived, you said it was at 11? Mm-hmm. You just need to say yes or no. Yes. Okay. Um, and Max Martinson was already there when she arrived at 11 o'clock? Yes. And she spoke with Max Martinson when she was there at 11 o'clock? Yes. Um, Jason Mengel had been there earlier in the day at 8 a.m.? Yes. Um, when Ezra arrived at 11, she didn't speak with Jason, agree? No. You agree? Yes. Exactly, Ms. McCandless was wearing that day? No. Okay, she had a flannel shirt on on the outside. Is that, do you remember that? Yeah. <clears throat> 
showing you what's been marked as exhibit number 632. Does that appear to be the flannel shirt that you observed her wearing that day? Yes. Move for the admission of exhibit 632. And no objection. Exhibit 632 will be received, ladies and gentlemen. Permission to publish. You may. Turn around and on the screen there, does that appear to be the same exhibit 632 that had previously handed to you? Yes. That's the flannel shirt that you observed her wearing on that day? Yes. And when you were working at uh, Racy's, were you a manager of some sort? No. Okay. Were you aware that they had a recording system there at Racy's? Yes. And that uh, it recorded people coming in and out and leaving that day? Yes just like it did on almost every day, right? Yes. Um, are you aware that there was a recording of Ezra walking in that day? Yes. And at the counter? Yes. Buying that coffee? Yes. That's all on videotape? Yes. Okay. Those are the only questions I have. Thank you. All right. Any redirect? Uh, no. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Wisniewski. You may step down and uh, assume, is she released from her subpoena? Yes. Okay. And thank you. Have a good day. Mr. Martinson, can you state and spell your first and last name for the court reporter, please? Yep. Uh, Maxwell Martinson, M-A-X-W-E-L-L-M-A-R-T-I-N-S-O-N. -L 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 Mr. Martinson, how old are you? 25. Um, what city do you live in? Eau Claire. How long have you lived in Eau Claire? Uh, about five years. Do you know Ezra McCandless? Yes. Is the person you know as Ezra McCandless in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you identify where that person is located by uh, location and item of clothing? She's sitting at that table in the middle um, with a pink jacket on. I'd ask the record reflect identification of the defendant. Mm -hmm. All right, the record uh, will so reflect. When did you meet uh, the defendant, if you remember? Probably somewhere around two, two and a half years ago. Where did you meet her, if you remember? At uh, Racy's Coffee Lounge. Did you ever hang out with the defendant outside of Racy's? Uh, yeah, a few times. Okay. Would you say your primary interactions were at Racy's, however? Yeah. I'm going to direct your attention specifically to March 22nd, 2018. Were you at Racy's that day? Yep. Do you remember approximately what time you got there? I, if I remember correctly, it was somewhere between 11 and 2. Do you remember seeing the defendant at Racy's that day? Yes. Do you remember approximately what time she got there? Just in that time period. I can't remember specifically. Did she, be, did she come after you? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I was there first. Do you remember where you were inside of Racy's when the defendant came? Mm -hmm. I was sitting at the bar. Um, just to the right at, at the bar, one of the stools at the bar. Co coffee bar? Mm -hmm. Okay. And just for the court reporter, um, yes or no, not. Okay. Um, okay. Sure. Thank you. Gotcha. Uh, do you remember who was sitting next to you? Jason Mengel. Had you previously talked with the defendant about swapping art? Yes. So you, do you do art yourself? Yes. And you knew that the defendant did art as well? Mm -hmm. that yes. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. Um, when the defendant came into Racy's, what did she do? She walked up to me and asked me if she wanted to, if I wanted to swap art with her that day. Were you planning to swap art? Um, vaguely. We hadn't made specific plans, but she just happened to be at Racy's, so. It worked out that way. So did you and the defendant decide to actually swap art that day? Yeah, we made the decision that day. So where did you go to do that? Um, we drove to my house in her car. Did the defendant tell you if there was a specific painting she wanted to give to you? Yes. Did she tell you anything about that painting? Yes. What did she say about the painting? It was in her and Jason's room when they were living together. Did she say where it was located in the room? If I remember correctly, it was above their bed or in front of it. You said that you went 
from Racy's and you're going to your house, approximately how far away was that drive? Probably five, ten minutes. And the defendant drove? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Sir. Thank you. Um, and that was in her car? Yes. Okay. Had you been in her car before? Yes. Did the defendant tell you at any point that morning why she was in town in Eau Claire that day? Yes. What did she say? She said that she was in town to uh, <coughs> deliver letters for delivery letters uh, that she wrote in therapy, if I remember correctly. Did she tell you who the letters were going to be delivered to? Not specifically, no. So you left in her car, went to your residence. What did you do when you got there? She gave me the painting. Um, then I walked into my house and grabbed two paintings to give to her. Did she stay in the car or did she go in the house with you? She stayed outside. The painting that she gave to you, was that in the car? Yes. So did you take that in and leave it inside of your house? Yes. Do you have a recollection of what the painting was looked like? Objection irrelevant. Oh, overruled. Yes. Uh, it was a character from, I think, I can't remember the character, but it looked like a bug with like a gas mask on it. So you went inside your house, dropped the one painting off, got two other paintings to give to the defendant, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what were those two paintings? One looked like a goat. It's like a strange goat painting. Um, the other was hard to describe. It's, it was a lot of lines, sort of an abstract painting. Did they have any s significant meaning to you or anything like that? I just thought that the goat, Ezra would like the goat painting. Okay. Your Honor, if I may approach. You may. I'm going to show you, if you look at the back, that's exhibit number 127. Do you recognize that painting? Yes. Which painting is that? The abstract painting. One of the paintings that you gave to the defendant? Yes. Have you look at exhibit 433? Do you recognize a painting in that photograph? Yes, the center. And are you looking, I'm pointing to the center, there's a, I don't know, maybe 8 by 10, maybe smaller canvas. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. And which painting is that? That is the goat painting. And exhibit 432, do you see the goat painting in this photograph? Yes. If you could... It's um, underneath the seat, underneath the CD and glove. So on the bottom right corner of the photograph? Yeah, it, I'm pretty sure that's the painting. Okay. Did you notice anything about the defendant's demeanor during your contact with her that morning? She seemed, um, in my opinion, understandably sad or maybe uh, low. What about your... I apologize. What was the last... Low? I don't know. Okay. Maybe. What about your observations? So what did you physically observe or hear that made you think that she was sad or low? Uh, just from our interaction, her demeanor, um, and I think I might have assumed, too, just judging by what I knew about the situation um, she was in. Do you remember when you got into the car where you put the paintings? Uh, I can't say definitively, but I'm pretty sure that I put it in the back seat. Both of them? If I remember correctly, yes. Okay. Do you remember if you were, did you ride back in the passenger seat? Yes. Do you remember if you were holding it when you were driving back? No. Okay. Was there any blood on either of the paintings when you gave them to the defendant? No. So it was about a 10-minute drive to your house. Was it about a 10-minute drive back? Yes. 
And what happened when you got back to Racy's? I just went back inside. I believe Ezra came. Wait, to, I'm sorry. I believe Ezra came inside too. Were both of the paintings that you gave in the car when you yes. got out at, at Racy's? Yes. Did you observe any knives in the vehicle during that time you were in the car that morning? No. Nothing further. Thank you. All right, Cross. Thank you. Just quickly about the vehicle, you didn't look in the glove box? No. You didn't look in the center console? No. You didn't look in the trunk? No. You didn't explore the back seat? No. You just, like most people, got in the car and sat in the passenger seat? Yes. Had a conversation with your friend who was the driver? Yes. And uh, part of that conversation was um, what she was doing that day. Is that right? Yes. Because um, she was back in Eau Claire. She hadn't been in Eau Claire for a while, at least around Racy's. Is that right? Yes. Uh, and she told you that um, she was there to deliver, as you said, some letters, right? Yes. When you'd previously spoke to the police, you'd call those journals. Would that be fair? I would probably call them letters. Okay. Um, and what did Ezra call them? Did Ezra call them journals or letters? I can't recall. All right. Um, so your memory of it is, is that there was some sort of letter to particular people or kind of a general letter that she was distributing to particular people? I understood them to be particular people, letters to particular people. Okay. And that these were uh, something that she'd been writing for therapy as recommended by her counselor, right? That's how I understood it, yeah. That's what she had told you is... I'm in counseling, I'm writing these letters, I'm going to go and deliver them, correct? Yes. Um, and it was based upon that recommendation that she told you from her counselor, right? Yes. And one of the people that she told you she was going to deliver the letter to was Alex Woodworth, right? She didn't specify who she was delivering letters to. I just knew that that was one of the reasons she was in town. Okay. And you knew that because of just the general background of the friend group there at Racy's that you knew about, right? I knew what? You knew about that because of the general background that you knew from the friend group at Racy's. I knew about her. Objection, I'd asked for specificity. Did you know that she was... Hold she, on, hold on. I'll withdraw the question and re rephrase it. Okay, Sorry. question withdrawn. <clears throat> Ezra told you she was going to Alex's, is that right? No. Okay, she told you she was delivering letters. Yes. She told you she was delivering letters to many people. She didn't specify how many people. More than one? Maybe. I could have, I inferred that. Okay. Uh, you inferred it because she used the plural letters as opposed to one? Maybe. It was over a year ago, so it was hard to remember specific. And I words understand you. and appreciate that. Um, I'm just trying to get the facts that you know today. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, and you talked to the police about this sometime in March of 2018, is that right? Yes. And again, that wasn't a year and a half ago, right? I'm excuse yes. me. Yes. Yeah. It was a year and a half ago. That was very soon after you had this drive and this art exchange with Ezra, right? Yes. Um, so you'd agree that you probably knew it better then than you yes. do now, right? Um, and when you spoke with the police, have you had a chance to review their report at some point in your preparation for the testimony today? No. Have you had a chance to review, uh, was there a recording of that made? I'm not sure. Okay, did anyone share a recording with you? No. Okay. So you're just going fresh off your memory today? I am working from my memory, yes. All right. When you spoke with the police back in March, uh, well, let me ask this. Would it refresh your memory to see uh, the police officer's summary of his conversation with you regarding what you told him about her delivering journals or letters to Alex? Yes. What page now? Approach. I'm going to show you uh, a page. You're welcome to read anything you want, but I'm going to direct your attention to this paragraph. Sure. That might help you. So read it to yourself, and then when you're done, just let me know, and I'll take it back and ask you some questions. Sounds good.
Okay. Did you get a chance to read that? Yes. Um, having read that, do you remember more about uh, what you told the police? Yes. Um, and one of the things is that you'd believe she was going to give this journal entry to Alex, right? Uh, yes, I believe that, yes. Okay. The painting uh, that she exchanged with you, you'd said she made some comments about it? Yes. So what you learned about the painting was based upon what Ezra told you, right? Yes. You didn't have knowledge outside of that regarding where the painting was or who had made it or anything about the significance of the painting other than what Ezra had said. Would that be fair to say? I don't believe that I spoke to Jason Mengel about the painting. If anyone were to have talked to me about it, it would have been him. But I believe that that was my first knowledge of the meaning of the painting was when Ezra and I talked okay. about it. So you agree? I agree. Yes, I agree. All right. Thank you. Um, and what Ezra told you about the painting is that it was significant <clears throat> painting in her relationship with Jason. Is that right? Yes. And that even though and she was giving that away on that day, correct? Yes. So she's giving away a painting that was significant with her and Jason to you, right? Yes. And delivering journals that she got from therapy, that she was told by her therapist to others, right? Yes. And one of those others was Alex. Yes. That's all. Thank you. Any redirect? Just one second, Your Honor. Just briefly, the painting that was hanging over um, the defendant in Jason Mengel's bed. Do you remember if the defendant told you a time period that that painting was there? I don't remember. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further. Any recross? No, thank you. Okay. All right, Mr. Martinson, you may step down. Thank you. Um,